Hi, please tell me, do you like hamburgers? Those wonderful toasted sesame seed buns and delicious smelling juicy beef patties, a slice of melted cheddar. Mmm, isn't your mouth already watering by just imagining it? Yes, I also like hamburgers, but they turn my life into a living hell and even cause me to commit a crime. My name is Stella, I am 14 years old, and this is my story. It all started approximately three years ago when I was almost 11. It was only three years ago, but I was noticeably younger, not only by my age, but also by my mentality. But I beg you, please do not blame my mother. She gave birth to me shortly after graduation, and even into her 30s, she still did not have enough experience to anticipate this unfortunate coincidence. Well, I was lost. We lived in the suburbs of a big city, and we usually went shopping in a neighborhood I did not know very well. And it happened right there. When we had bought everything we needed, my mother went to get the car so that we didn't have to walk all the way to the parking lot with our heavy shopping bag. I moved off the sidewalk a little bit while I was waiting, and I saw that there was a bus stop with a bus leaving, and suddenly I saw my mother taking the bus. I didn't even have time to think, I just jumped on the bus following her, and it was only when I was inside that I realized that the woman I thought was my mother was not really her. She just looked similar with the same hair and clothes that looked like my mom's. I was so shocked that I managed to travel a few miles before I got off in a totally unknown place. Now, I have no clue why I didn't just approach somebody and ask them for help, explaining that I was lost. I was probably so ashamed of my mistake that I just couldn't think straight at the moment. And also, I was really scared. I was walking alongside this unknown neighborhood around unknown people, trying not to draw any attention to myself. Mom found me in the evening with the help of the police, but I was totally stressed by that time and it affected me deeply. Especially one episode. When that terrible day was almost over, I had become really hungry, to the extent that I got cramps in my stomach and my hands were trembling. I wanted to eat so badly that I even stopped being scared. So when I saw somebody's untouched hamburger in a carton box on an outdoor table in some cafe, I did not hesitate. I don't know who left it or why, but it did not matter. What mattered was that I still remember the taste of this hamburger and the feeling of my hunger retreating. Also that I felt safe while I was eating it. That was the day my eating disorder began. After a short time, I ate hamburgers for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Actually, I was able to stuff some other food in my mouth, but with difficulty. And it always had some consequences. Fruits and vegetables smelled strange now. And I could get nausea from a single apple. I would get this feeling that I was putting something inedible in my mouth. Something that my stomach would not be able to digest and metabolize. And which had to be gotten rid of ASAP. So if I was forced to eat something apart from hamburgers, I had to go to the bathroom to empty my stomach. It was not hard. Throwing up helped me pretend I was eating normal food. I did not say a word to my parents and I carefully concealed my new habit. You might ask how I managed to do this. Well, it was a piece of cake. My parents were young and they thought that food was not something that has to even be cared about that much. They almost never cooked at home and loaded the fridge with packaged products and the simplest meals which I could always cook with the help of a microwave. And also my parents' way of life is kind of unusual. They both work as administrators for a nightclub and live a more nocturnal lifestyle. So we never had dinners together. As for the babysitters, well there is nothing simpler than tricking a nanny. When I got older, my parents decided that it would be much easier if they left me some cash so that I could order takeout guess what I ordered? Of course, hamburgers. The junk food did not really have any impact on my looks. I am a normal height for my age. I am neither fat nor skinny. So if hamburgers did any harm, then it was only to my hair and nails, which became dull and weak. Sometimes I got some unpleasant hives on my neck and chest, which I hid under my clothes. I also had some digestive problems, but I'd rather not talk about those. Time went by and I successfully deceived everyone around me for three years and it seemed to me that this could go on forever. But everything changed when my Aunt Molly started her own business and opened a fast food restaurant. 
where, of course, hamburgers were an essential part of the menu. By that moment, I had already turned 14 and I was looking for a part-time job, so I asked her if she needed some help. Aunt Molly joyfully agreed and sent me to help in the kitchen. Soon afterward, she promoted me so that I could pick any job I liked at her cafe. I did everything that was needed. I washed dishes, I cleaned the dining room, I helped to unload and put away products, and assisted the cook while he made burgers. In some cases, I even had access to the cash register in Aunt Molly's cafe. Every day after school, I went to the cafe to work, where I spent time surrounded by dozens of my dear hamburgers indulging in their delicious smell. Oh my. So I started to get food from Aunt Molly's kitchen. Why should I order food elsewhere if I had everything there at arm's length? As much as I wanted. Then I started to steal hamburgers from the kitchen, diligently saving the cash in my closet that my parents left for me to buy food. Apparently, this could not last forever. My aunt could not help but notice that the restaurant's revenue slightly differed from the cost of products purchased for the kitchen, and she went through the security camera video recordings. Can you imagine what it felt like for her to uncover that it was her own niece who was stealing from her? Aunt Molly decided to postpone lecturing me in person and called my parents first. At the time, she thought I was selling hamburgers under the table in order to make some money, and she advised my mother to find out about her 14-year-old girl's secret spending. So my parents snuck into my room and found all of the cash I'd saved. I did not count it, but by that time I'd saved quite a lot of money, which they thought that I had stolen from Aunt Molly, and then I had to tell them everything. I just had to explain. Mom and Dad were so shocked that they did not notice for so long that their daughter was in trouble, and they promised to pay more attention to me and my problems, and of course they were going to help me cure my eating disorder. Well, soon I am going to a special treatment center where I hope I will get some help. And please, if any of you have a similar problem, talk about it. As you can see, silence won't lead to anything good.